Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to cover the three best performing decks in Standard. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the meta decks themselves or if you want to know how to counter them. This meta is practically the same as last patch, but with a new contender being added to the mix of powerful strategies. Let's see what these strong Standard decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And to start us off, I want to talk about the new contender in the meta, and that is Demacia Kaisa. With a win rate of 56.1% and a play rate of 4.15%, it has cemented itself as a dominant meta deck. Its best matchups include Aurelian Sol Asandra, variations of Teemo Kate Puffcaps, and also Elites. The worst matchups are Darius LeBanc, Talia Malphite, Nasus Vaults, and also Alawi Jarvan. Honestly, Kaisa in general has been kinda AFK. There was a bump in play rate back when Evelyn got some of her cards reworked, like Steam, right? And that was really good. We got to see some Evelyn Kaisa here and there. But Kaisa Demacia, you know, we haven't seen in quite some time. The main strategy of the deck is to play different keywords over the course of the game, because that is going to level Kaisa and also make her leveled attack even stronger. To do that, we run things like Voidling, who can roll a whole bunch of different keywords, so you want to be looking for things like Elusive, Brash, Faded, Augment, things that we don't have easy access to with the rest of the deck. Next we have Xersai Hatchling, who not only gives us one, but two keywords for Kaisa's level, which is Fearsome and also Lurk. Moving on to Belveth the Elder, a 2 mana 3 one that has Spell Shield, so that's a pretty good keyword for us, and also has Evolve. So this is the mechanic that's making Kaisa stronger as well, and like is also leveling her. The other units in the deck that have Evolve as a keyword can also get the same buffs as her, so that's really cool. We can also play Belveth the Elder, and then maybe sit on him in the early game, play a bunch of keywords, and then he will level up for us, getting plus 2 plus 2, and also has Spell Shield, so just a really good card overall. Next we have Blinding Assault, which is not one, but two keywords for Kai'Sa. Ideally we want to play Valor, the turn we're going to play Kai'Sa. So we can do like on attack 5, spend 2 mana to play Valor, and then use Kai'Sa's spell to copy the keywords from Valor onto Kai'Sa, because she really wants to have Scout, that's like her best one. Scout, Overwhelm, and Challenger, ooh, super good for her. So yeah, Valor's going to come up as both an activator for her keywords, but also to transfer the keywords over to her directly. Next we have Triple Form Up, nice Demacia protection spell, we're going to want that so we can deal with damage removal. Touch Aside Broadwing, again not one, but two keywords for Kai'Sa, helping her turbo level. And then we have Blocking Badger Bear, who does not have a keyword, but is just a very strong uh, turn 3 unit, 4-4, four, four, really good at blocking elusive strategies as well. Two Cataclysm, this can be used as like a win con, like let's say you have Overwhelm on Kai'Sa, you can get your attack in and then use her to challenge an enemy and then like get the Overwhelm damage, so it's like a pseudo finisher, but you can also use this on Scout to cheat the attack token on your defense turn. So for example, if you have a Scout unit and you're on defense, you can use Cataclysm. If it resolves, that counts as your Scout attack, giving you a regular attack token for the turn, basically allowing you to double rally for the cost of three. Really scary. Durand Protégé, 3 mana 3, 2, play, grant an ally 0, 1, and tough. The tough keyword is kind of what's important. We're going to be wanting to put that on any of our early game units. We can put it on like our Petrosite Broadwing, use it to uh, clear a lot of early game stuff, put in a lot of pressure, and just make our curve nice and smooth. That way we can get Kaisa down and not be too far behind. Combat Cook, when I'm summoned I improvise and forge me. So we're going to be wanting to look for the keyword ones with this. We can do the scout weapon, which we can put onto Kaisa later, which is really cool. We can do like the overwhelm weapon, also put it on Kaisa, which is really cool. We got the impact weapon. We have all kinds of stuff like that. So Combat Cook, really good at just finding more keywords. And also you can get the weapon, uh, use Combat Cook to fight for the board, trade into something, and then put the weapon on Kaisa, which is really good. Repost. Quick little 4 mana burst speed spell, give an ally 3-0 and barrier, the barrier is a really good keyword, you can also use this as protection against damage removal or if you really need to trade into something in combat, a very nice flexible card. Two right of negation of course we're in Shirima, having Shirima deny is very good especially against a lot of big top end spells that we don't want the opponent to resolve. Void Blaster, 4 mana 4-4 four, four, has Overwhelm and also Evolve. So yeah, really good. This is going to be our Overwhelm activator for Kai'Sa, along with like the weapon and stuff, but also has Evolve, so it can be a bit bigger. Nice 6-6 body with Overwhelm, really strong. 
And then we have two Garen. Garen has regen. That's nice. Regen's a good keyword to have to try to help level our Kaisa. He's especially good when we're attacking on evens. So we can play Garen on defense five and then play Kaisa on attack six. And then we have double champion set up. You can share some like keywords and stuff and be really good. So yeah, really sick push. Also, Garen comes up if we play wide and we're just controlling the board. We can use Garen for like really strong mid game pushes. Kaisa herself, here we are, one of the cornerstones of the deck. 5 mana 4-4 four, four has quick attack, so that is a built-in keyword. That's really nice. Also evolve, like I mentioned, so she's going to be a 6-6 six, six when she levels. When I'm summoned or round star, if you have the attack token, create a second skin in hand. Now, second skin is a slow speed spell that's fleeting, so you have to use it that turn. Grant allied Kaisas everywhere another ally's positive keywords. So you target any other ally, and then it gives it to Kaisas everywhere. Not only the Kaisa on your board, but also Kaisas in deck. So if you play her later, and you resolved second skin on Valor, well then she's going to have Challenger and also Scout. That's really strong. To level her, all you have to do is evolve, which is again, play the different keywords over the course of the game. So pretty easy condition. So on her level 2 attack, she also comes with a bunch of missiles worth of damage for each positive keyword she has. It deals one to the lowest HP unit or nexus, and then it targets the next one, and then the next one, and then it kind of spreads out like that. Her champion spell is Supercharge, so if you're on multiple Kaisas, it's actually quite good. You can just do a quick Focus Speed, Overwhelm, and Spell Shield on one unit. Really nice to set up open attacks, essentially. And it's two keywords, so that's really good, especially putting them onto Kaisa herself. Rounding us out, we have one Jarvan. Uh, he's pretty optional, you can just run 3 Garen, but having Jarvan's really nice because he has barrier, that's pretty good in case we couldn't get to a post at some point in the game. We could do like Kaisa on defense 5, and then open 6, Jarvan will come out with barrier, that could level Kaisa, and then we're getting, you know, extra attacks in, it's just really good overall. And then, of course, champion strength, 9 minutes slow speed, give allies 4-4, four, four. if you have the attack token, give them scout, that's really broken, we can just use this as a win con. Whether or not we're on Kaisa or we're just going wide, champion strength is always broken. And that about wraps it up for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, for the example game we have Ionia Viego. That's a bit of a classic. So we're going to want to be trying to turbo level our Kaisa and get to her as soon as we can. We have Hatchling on 1, Broadwing 2, Belveth the Elder 3. I mean, that's honestly a pretty good curve. It's also a big mix of keywords. We got Garen, that's nice. I'd rather you be Kaisa, but that's okay. Voidling, we can always check what Voidling rolled. Tough, not super good because we have access to tough, so let's go ahead and just play the Hatchling out. And then turn 2 is Broadwing, and then turn 3 is probably Elder and Voidling, since we have the mana to play out all those. And that'll pretty much be a Kaisa level, depending on what we hit. That's a lot of keywords, because we already have the uh, Fearsome plus Lurk, Spell Shield, Formidable Challenger. Yeah, it's kind of huge. Augment, wow, I really want to hit that. Unfortunately, we can't really curve it. It's alright. As long as we don't hit exactly, like, Fearsome, it shouldn't matter that much. Go ahead and Broadwing. Um, Ceaseless Sentry. Sure, looks good. I'd probably be down to block it. Tough. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do the Belveth the Elder. I was born in Belveth. I cannot leave. Five keywords, yeah. So we level Kaisa and, you know, all of our Evolve units on turn three. That is absolutely turbo. One of the fastest ever. I don't think you can get faster than turn three. Voidling. And they're, bo oh my god, Voidling's also an evolve unit, guys. So that's just a lot of pressure. I'm going to go and swing into that too. Why not? Wow. That is turn three. Yeah, we're just going to be playing wide. We don't even need Kaisa. Because if we set up like Broadwing, open another 2 drop next turn, and then just Garen on attack 5, we're going to be so far ahead. Drawing cards, yep. Yep. Yep, yep. All good. All that looks right to me. Holy guacamole. Oh, there's Kaisa. It's so over. Ooh, what if we top deck... I want to top deck the uh, Valor, right? Uh, we can block this. We have tough. We can literally block it for free. Kaisa's just going to get Vengeance, though, I think. But I'm still going to play her, I believe. I believe we still play her. Let's get the nice level up animation as well. Go to Pink Board. 
Beautiful. Alright, Kaisa. You're gonna get vengeance on summon. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but goodbye. I guess I could also, like, Will of Ionia or something, right? Just bounce her back to hand. Also annoying, but I'm gonna second skin Elder. Concussive. That's not so bad, actually. I thought she was dead. Um, yeah, let's second skin. That way we could put Spell Shield on her and make her even safer. And the next turn we have Riot Negation Mana too, so it's going to be hard for them to catch back up to this. I will do what I can. Go ahead and swing into 3-3. Three, three. Um, or 3-2. I don't really think it matters which one I swing into, right? The other one's probably going to get traded anyways. Um... There's more value in making sure this dies so they can't use a recall to have another concussive. And then the other one just trades. Bonk bonk. Okay, we're going to six floating two. That gives us eight total mana to play with. Oh, elusive voidling. I lost it. Now it's overwhelm, which is honestly probably better. Ooh, six mana full float. That's a pretty decent threat. I don't want to play Garen here. Let's go ahead and play Elder. It's too late. You can't stop them. No, but I can help save my people. Yep, got them. So yeah, there's not a lot they can do about this. We're just gonna have next action win. Really strong mid-game push here. And moving right along, we have everyone's favorite, Karma Set, with a win rate of 52.45% and a play rate of 4.17%. It's still doing very good. Its best matchups include Vaults of Helia Nasus. Viego Nora, also Aurelian Soul Nora. Its bad matchups include Galio Udir, variations of Vayne Aatrox, and also Kaisa. The biggest takeaway from the matchup spread is that Demacia midrange is super good into Karma Set, so take that into consideration. Maybe Kaisa is just like the savior we needed for this meta, right? But yeah, getting into the list specifically, we have Double Ferris Financier, doubles up as Blocker and also a Resource Generator. We have our six Mystic Shots right here, High No and Mystic itself. I know has a bonus effect of after you cast six unique spells, you can also deal one to a second unit, so that's pretty nice. Triple tag out can use it two mana recall ally or five mana recall enemy, create a coin. Coins are going to be hella abused in this deck, so we love the coin synergy. Two hard run aftershock, not tell stones, because I guess sometimes we don't have the mana for it, or we want to float one mana so that way we have coin mana. And yeah, we just use aftershock to clear out three HP units and also landmarks. Next we have 2 Pit Professional, 3 mana 3-3 three, three coming in, pretty good stats, also just generates us a coin, very nice. And then we have Yep Clock, 4 mana 2-2, two, two, elusive, play, predict, then draw 1, reduce its cost by 1. There's a lot of good hits that we can have with this, of course, just a, overall a really good elusive consistency card. Can use it for like 2 cheap damage as well, in case the opponent isn't on an elusive strategy, or we can use it to block enemy elusive strategies, just a really good flexible card. 2 Caustic Riff, of course, Flow I cost 2 less, deal 1 to all enemies, AoE removal, very strong. 2 Concussive Palm, 2 stun enemies in their tracks, also get Tail the Dragon. If you're in specific game states where you can recall this guy, then he can also turn back into Concussive Palm, and that's kind of sick. Double Deny, of course we are Ionia, so we're going to be telling the enemies no whenever they try to cast anything. Triple Smooth Mixologist, 4 minute 3, 4, heal an ally or your Nexus 3, and create a coin in hand. Helps to stabilize in the more aggressive matchups. Very nice into burn. Next we have Karma, 5 mana 4, 3, round end, create in hand a random spell from your regions. That's pretty nice. Um, you're Enlightened, that's her level up condition. Enlightened means you have 10 mana. So, on round end, she's still creating, you know, in hand a random spell. That's pretty cool. However, when you play a spell, copy at the same targets. There's going to be a lot of abuse cases with this, by the way. When we're double casting, it's going to give us a lot of value, a lot of draw, a lot of mana. Also, uh, sets spell that we're going to get from him. Really, really strong stuff in the late game. Next, we have Place Your Bets. This is one of the cards we're going to be abusing with Karma. So what this does is it allows us to draw four and also create four coins. And then if we cast the coin, that's actually going to double cast. And that gives us four, you know. If, if we're not on any other coins before this, by the way, that will give us eight mana, right? Because it's four coins twice. So that is really, really insane. Place your bets basically means draw four, gain eight mana for the turn, and then you can continue playing more coin cards. You can refill your mana again. You can almost go pseudo infinite, it feels like. So yeah, when karma's leveled and you have the coins being generated, it feels really, really strong. Next, we have triple set. 
the first time I would drop below one health while attacking, give me barrier. He's pretty good at just like clearing the board, right? Because he has challenger, good at killing high priority units. If you spend 40 plus mana over the course of the game, he levels. That's super easy for us to do. And then while he's leveled, he doesn't take any damage or die while attacking. Pretty good effect. However, the more powerful effect is each round create a showstopper in hand once you've spent 12 mana that round. Showstopper says zero mana, okay, slow speed, obliterate an enemy, deal one to all other enemies and the enemy nexus. Luckily, this is once per turn. However, unluckily, if you recall set and replay him and then coin and spend 12 mana again, which is actually pretty easy to do, uh, you'll get a second showstopper for the turn. Also, each time you cast it, Karma is double casting it, so it's obliterating something twice, which is kind of overkill, but the deal two is pretty relevant, right? And then the opponent just doesn't want to play anymore. So most of the time, they will just surrender if you are on set and Karma at the same time. Rounding us out, we have two formula, just more draw consistency. Very nice. Draw two, refill your spell mana. Very strong. And double hex obliterator, just a nice quick single target removal card. If the unit would die from the damage, it gets obliterated instead, so you get to bypass last breath effects and also get to destroy weapons permanently. Very good. And that's it for this deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. Alright, for the example game, we are fighting Aurelian Soul of Freljord, which I think is one of our good matchups. I want to keep the clock. Probably pitch the rest. I think it's important to find um, Karma and Set. Ideally Set. But yeah, with our draw, we should be able to get there. Removal is also super important in case, you know, the developing stuff in the early game. Yeah, Aftershock's also really nice. There's our Karma. Yep. We're completely down just passing the first two turns. We're very reactive. We're very slow. Don't gotta do much mysticism. Uh, kind of wish I was just on straight up Deny right now. Deny would be cool. But for now, let's just Aftershock. Clean that up. Float perfect mana going into next turn. Seems good to me. I'll play Yep Clock. Try to find Set. Set would be ideal. No Set. But we do have a cheap Karma. Or we have a cheap Clock. I don't think we really need cheap Karma. We're just playing around 9 anyways. So, another Clock is good. Get our free damage. Bonk. And then they play Star Shaping. Heal 2 to get a Celestial that costs 7 or more. Alright. I got the Karma anyways. I have a lot of Karma. Maybe the game's trying to tell me something, huh? Huh? Probably not. So... I'm gonna clock again. Oh, another star shaping. So they're just gonna be on some really big units turn seven onwards. I do have like ooh, give me that. I do have outs for them though. I can recall, I can stun. Uh are we doing anything else this turn? Probably not, right? Let's uh let's play the set down. Technique is for lightweights. See what shenanigans they're on. Uh, Winter's Touch, yeah. Continue ramping, that makes sense. What else? What you gonna do for five? Sunburst. Okay, so Sunburst is not a problem. We'll just tag out for two. Nice and easy. Also get a coin, which we need. Recall an ally for two is so valuable. And swing. We have perfect mana. We just replay the set. He lost his discount from the clock, though, which is a bit sad. So we're going to be on set, and then we have five minutes to still recall an enemy if we need to with tag out. We also have Mystic Shot plus tag out to deal with Aurelian Soul. So that's pretty good news. Um, yeah, we'll just play set. Want a piece of me? Line starts here. And then we can do something like concussive. That's fine. I'm gonna hold the tag out for Mr. Aurelian Soul. Yep. Turn eight. We can go ahead and send it. I saw you looking at me. Set's gonna go down to one HP and maintain his barrier. Well, we're actually pushing a relevant amount of damage. 
there's some world where we could just like double cast Mystic and stuff like that. Ooh, Celestial Wand there. And um, kill the opponent. That is something that they have to worry about. Sure. Now play... Oh, actually, Aesol costs 8, so you can't even play him here. Mortal Fire. Yeah. Alright. The next Dragon or Celestial you play. Sounds good. I'm gonna play Karma. Now. Where there is life, there is hope. You can also play out... Um, Ferris on Enchi, I suppose. Or I can just full float. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Let's play him. Exbliterator? That's really good. Because we can obliterate the Immortal Fire, right? Isn't that busted? That's like so good into them. Oh, a free Mystic! They're about to be so mad. We're gonna ping off the Aurelian Spell Shield with our free Mystic? Oh, man. You hate to be that. Alright, so let's do this in the correct order. Tag out, recall enemy. Uh, Mystic, do that. Then we are on four mana. Yep. So it resolves backwards. Shoot that. Recall. Put that right back in your hand. Sorry, friend. I'm gonna be cringe today. It is what it is. Uh, we can chump block that. We can also do something like I know Mystic. Mm -hmm. Come on. Two, four, six. We could do like Your attack is obvious. Mystic and also high note. Then we kill the Eclipse that way too. While also leveling set. Never lost yet, and I, ain't now. I wanna be a little proactive here with my spells because I'm gonna need hand space for next turn. Because we're gonna get that leveled karma and we're gonna hit the go button. But make sure we do that during the combat so it doesn't gain Fury proc. Kill that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little over, I think. Leveled Karma. Yep. Then we do a little bit of a place your bets, right? We don't have enough room in our hand for that, though. Actually, um, oh well, place your bets. We only burned one. Yeah, we burned a formula. That's completely fine. Like what? Um. Good swing, put them to three. And then coin, do some more shenanigans. Or we can do coin hexbliterator and then get our um stuff buried in ice, which would be kind of cringe. Because I'm not on deny, I do think it's actually fine to just attack this. Yeah. Because we can re-ping off Aurelian Soul spell shield with literally anything in our hands. And then use um, Karma's Obliteration. Or not Karma's Obliteration, but Showstopper, you know? She Who Wanders. Um, obliterating these? And also the ones in hand. I feel like that's pretty fine. I don't care that much about that. How much are we re refilling? 12? Um, um, okay. We're going to play Caustic for fun. Doesn't really matter how we do this. We can do this so many different ways now that I'm looking at it. Go ahead and play out the caustic. Then we can also. Come on now. Then we can coin. We're gonna play this first. Now let's just coin. Go back up to max. Then we can do aftershock. Kill that. Formula. Here we go. Draw four. It is definitely balanced. Hey, there's deny. Go stopper. Deal two AOE. Why don't you sit I'm just kind of like having fun. I'm just playing a whole bunch of stuff here. I play clock. Find a mystic. And then shoot the face for lethal. It is what it is. Hey, sometimes you go out like that. <laughs> it's so, so dumb, man. <laughs> I'm just playing and playing and playing. And now pulling a 180, we're gonna play a very fast aggressive deck. That is Fizz Samira. 
With a win rate of 55.05% and a play rate of 3.74%, it is the aggro deck to play. Its best matchups are Dragons, Nasus Vaults, Viego Nora, and also the Bilgewater Aatrox. The worst matchups for this deck are Elites, Kaisa Demacia, Karma Set, and also Jinx Samir Discard. Getting into the list specifically, what we want to do is damage the enemy Nexus directly, do it a whole lot, and win the game, right? Very, very basic uh, win con. However, there are some pretty intricate combos in this deck. There is some nuance to how we float mana, how we play out our spells, and make sure we combo them properly, doing damage and then plunder effects and trying to get our monkeys uh, for our win con, right? So it's a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty easy deck to pilot and also win with. Starting us off with triple warning shot, zero mana deal one. This is going to be nice because it's going to be activating plunder for us for whatever turn we want to use it. Triple all out, really strong card. Little combat trick, can use it defensively or aggressively. Very, very broken, especially with our elusives. Elegant Edge, 1 mana, 1, 2, Fearsome on Plunder. So if you've dealt damage with any of your spells or if you just hit the enemy face with something, you can also gain 2, 0. Really nice. Uh, 1 mana, 3, 2, Premium Body. So really good card. Vizarino, 1 mana, 2, 1. When you play a spell, stop all enemy spells and skills targeting me and give me Elusive this round. So we can use Warning Shot or, you know, anything else like that to just protect our Fizz from targeted removal. Really, really annoying to deal with, especially something like Make It Rain, because Make It Rain targets three specific things. However, if Fizz disables it, then it kind of fizzles out entirely and doesn't hit anything. And that's really strong. So yeah, Fizz is super good into targeted removal. He's an elusive threat if you're just setting up with any of your spells, you know, prior to using Fizz, like Stylus Shot and stuff like that. So really, really good overall. When he levels, he does even more damage and on Nexus Strike creates a, a Long Tooth spell. Four mana, summon Long Tooth, give an enemy vulnerable that way you can push overwhelm so really scary extra fizz also becomes rally so the deck has multiple ways to have access to rally that's really scary too so yeah fizz really strong champion next we have jagged butcher one mana two two plunder grant me plus one plus one so he can be a three three very nice one of the other broken cards of the deck stylish shot one mana focus speed spell deal one to the enemy nexus the next time any ally strikes the nexus this round create a stylish shot in hand this is not fleeting this is not you know, once per turn, you just get Stylus Shot back. And that's really, really, really good. And then if you rally, you can replay Stylus Shot and do it again. And you kind of just win by chipping at the opponent. If you resolve four Stylus Shots over the course of the game, that's already a Decimate for one, while also having synergy with the rest of the deck, while also leveling Fizz and Samira and, you know, crazy stuff. Stylus Shot, really crazy card. Father Fury, Elusive, two mana, two, one, Plunder, refill one spell mana and create a random Jettison. Oh, not Jettison, sorry. Random one cost spell from your regions in hand. For me though, it's always Jettison. I, I didn't know he could actually even create other cards than that. You know, it's always Jettison and Blood Bait, so that's insane. So Father Fury can also hit Stylish Shot and All Out and some really, really broken cards. Even Parley's really good. Um, but for the most part, if you're watching me or if you are me, hi, uh, you're gonna be pulling Jettison and Blood Bait, and that's really fun too. Next we have Jagged Taskmaster, two minute three, two plunder, grant one cost allies everywhere, one zero. So get the plunder effect off. Now all of our one drops are dealing one extra damage and that includes our monkeys, which we'll be getting to. Monkeys are one drop units that we're summoning that also deal extra damage. That's really, really good. Speaking of which, here's the monkey. Summon a powder monkey, plunder, also summon a powder monkey next round start. These are gonna be dealing damage on death. So that's really good round end or whenever they go into combat. This is nice because it's giving us other ways of proccing plunder while also chipping away at the opponent's nexus. Triple Pirouette, another very broken card. Two mana slow speed spell, plunder I cost one less so it can be a one cost card. Deal one to anything and stun an enemy. You can use that to deal one to the enemy nexus or ping off and finish off a low HP unit, stun another, puts you really far ahead. Kind of just insane, aggressively or defensively. It comes up so often. Triple Samira, when I'm summoned or strike create a flare. Flare is a one mana spell, it's burst speed, deal one to the enemy nexus, or give an allied Samira challenger this round, she has quick attack, so that's really good. To level her up, I've seen you play six cards, resets when you start a round with the attack token. Alright, so when she's leveled, now whenever she strikes or is summoned, you get a zero cost flare. That makes her second effect much easier, which is when you play six cards, rally. This also resets when you start a round with the attack token, that's really... Um, not that hard to do. Obviously, if you've already leveled Samira and you're in the late game, you can probably refill your hand and just start like spamming these free all outs 
or not all outs, these free flares. You can use all out too, and that's really good. And then just rally, attack multiple times with monkeys. Well, block with the monkeys. They can't attack multiple times because if they strike, they'll die to ephemeral. But attack with the monkeys, attack with fizz, attack multiple times with your other units, and you just push, you know, lots of damage. Next, we have double noxion fervor. Just a clean way to close out some games if the opponent taps out. You can just use this as a quick three damage finisher. If you target a monkey with this and then it resolves, that's dealing four. So we basically have decimate at fast speed and that's really good as long as the resolution happens. Next, we have triple barb chain. Plunder, I cost two less, so two mana. Uh, burst speed, draw two at the next round start. Give them fleeting. Fleeting never really matters because we're going to be playing the cards out anyways. So yeah, just really good refill. Kind of insane. Barb chains are really, really, really strong for Fizz Samira in particular. Loves that. And to round it out, we have Triple Powder Pandemonium. Slow speed. Summon a Powder Monkey for each time you've activated Plunder this game. So we're going to be wanting to Plunder, you know, quite often. Then we get to summon a bunch of monkeys, upwards of six if our entire board is empty. And then when they die, that's, you know, one damage for each monkey. That's really good. Expected result is probably around like three to five. That's going to be really good for you. If you can hit like six monkeys and then that's how you close out. That's just really funny. I've actually seen opponents straight up surrender because they have like five or six HP and you get full monkeys and they just don't have an out. So yeah, the monkeys are going to come in and close it out for us. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game. Oh dear, it's the karma. Like actually though, karma set. But this is karma for me playing the deck. Uh, About... You know a couple minutes ago so let's go ahead and full pitch uh we could keep a pirouette but i definitely just want to see my warning shot my stylus shot my all out my champions yeah this is all the good stuff that's what i like to see so we have to mainly play around high note and mystic in the early game which means um we could probably play fizz on turn one that's not even that bad they can't really do anything for one so we can just go ahead and play fizz and then lead next turn with Stylus Shot. That gives us all out mana as well. And the ability to play it in case they are on a removal spell. And we're going to just try to like run away with the early game. Go ahead and get that in. There's no way they ever try Mystic. Nice, we got the Stylus Shot back. If they play Pharos, then we would play out our Butcher. But because they're holding the mana, they could probably shoot my Fizz after. Unless I want to use my Warning Shot, which... Oh, maybe I should have. I didn't want to. But I could have. Uh, this turn's probably just Samira. Oh, they're passing. That's pretty scary. Uh, yeah, we can probably Samira this up. Take the shot or lose the chance. We can Samira this. It's not like they hard run Shock Blast. If they did, that'd be bad for them. After Shock. Yeah, that kills even through All Out, so. Yeah, you got that. Ugh. Sounds good to me. I can't do much about that, Captain. All right, go ahead and do Stylus Shot again, and then play Butcher. And we're going to try to push on the opponent's Nexus. If they play Yep Clock, then they can block Fizz if they want. But we should still be able to get the Stylus Shot in, which would be really good. Exologist, okay. Um, let's go ahead and send it. This should be relatively safe. We can play all out on the butcher to make this trade positive for us. Yeah, go ahead and take her down. And also live to tell the tale. This should get the strike in. Give us our style of shot back. Nice. Pass. So we should have fizz level very soon. Pass master. Sure, that's good. We can actually do Blair into Taskmaster. That sounds good. Uh, deal one. Play Task. We sail. If Set comes down and kills Fizz, we can just replay Fizz. That's really good too. So I feel like we're in a pretty strong spot, honestly. The only thing I'm a bit worried about is my hand. My hand's looking a little low. If I top deck uh, draw card though, we'll be in a good spot. Yeah, go ahead, kill my Fizzerino. That's fine. Cause I have some bad news for you. Another one. And another one. Pass. Um. Go ahead and lead stylish again. Go ahead, 
threaten the attack. See what happens. Let's throw down. All right. What you got? What you got for me today? That we can interact with, or at least attempt to. Top deck. Hmm. What is this? Oh, top deck recall. That's really interesting. Warning shot. That's them down to seven. One, two, three. Mm, four from Stylish Shot. We don't really have to overcommit and also throw these on here. I'm kind of satisfied with just doing this. We got Chum of the Waters. We got our Stylish Shot back. That's nice. Getting the extra resource from Fizz level is huge. Because I am running a bit low. Um, Sure, I don't have to do anything. I can play Chum on defense turn. I have all the mana in the world. Elegant Edge. That's cool. We like her. Want a piece of me? Line starts here. Yeah, yeah, we can chum that. I feel like he's just gonna go for my fizz anyways. I don't really see a world where he's gonna kill my long tooth. And then we can make long tooth swing into him and you know push some damage. Love that. I do warning shot, elegant edge, open stylish, try to win the game. Yeah, this looks good. It does feel kind of cool to play out like the combos like, oh, boom, then plunder, then boom, then plunder. That's fun. I like that part of this deck. Mm, yep. Warning shot, elegant edge. Yeah, even if we tried to like buff Fizz into killing set, it wouldn't work because he would live with one and also gain barrier. It's kind of cringe. Yeah, so we're just good to go on this. If they try to do Mystic or High Note, I mean, I guess I could protect, and that might be worth. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather just use All Out for, like, a lethal. Place your bets. All right. I'm coming in with the open, though. I'm going to open attack. Something like... Ew, Double Caustic would be really cringe, actually. That would clean me up. There's also a lot of merit to attacking with set on like the far right in case they're on Spirit's Refuge for some weird reason just because they're Ionia, but don't think that's going to come up. Uh, yeah, just don't double caustic me. I guess if you do, I'll all out my shark. Yeah, that pushes some damage. That's the best I'm going to get. And I guess it is lethal. Formula. All right, I think we got him. If you're going to formula... You also have the coin, and it's not going to put you in a much better spot than you were just now. Top deck, concussive? Maybe? It's not enough, though. They could try, like, concussive, coin second, concussive, and then I'll all out. Or if, like, anything hits. I mean, stylish shot's also lethal. They'd have to bop, bop, bop. That could actually be the play. Let's see. Because they're on eight. What you got? Should I be worried? I'm a bit worried. Nope. Okay, never mind. Nothing to worry about. Easy. Not even close. I don't even know what that card is. So yeah, to wrap things up, the meta is pretty much the same as last patch. Samira Fizz is the best aggro deck. Karma Set is the best control deck. But... Kaisa Demacia coming in as the best midrange deck does spice things up quite a bit. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.